Is it well with your soul? Are you free and made whole? Is it well? Just thank God if it's well in your soul. Mm, mm. That's the truth, y'all. And if you ever been redeemed, then you know just why. Me, is it well? Just thank God it's well in your soul. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. I ain't even worried about getting no strike with that one. That's what I have to do. I have to put original or uh, stuff up there that I know I can use. And um, especially when I go into a, a little bit of uh, soul music that comes from the heart. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Um, I hope all is well. This is a shout out to everybody. Um, Yanni, Takwa, Tommy, Elijah, Shaka Zulu, uh, all of y'all out there that support the channel. I want to thank you uh, for being out there. Um, thank you for your comments and when you contribute, I appreciate it um, to the channel. So. I wanted to give y'all a shout out this morning and hope all is well in your world. Okay, listen, you guys. I, what I'm going to talk about is probably going to be a little uncomfortable or a little unpopular, but I just want y'all to hear me out, family. And this is regarding uh, how you feel when you first meet somebody. Okay? And I, what has kind of been the catalyst for this short talk after dark is uh you know I watched paternity court okay and to be honest with you it is one of the most truest but diabolical um shows in in terms of lies and human nature um that you want to see. And actually it shows the other side of feminine, feminine energy and wild that is sort of like the black widow spider, right? You have these women. So, I mean, women that play all kinds of games. Now I'm not talking about the women that are very straight up with their behavior and they, they um, have done and accepted full responsibility for their behavior. I'm not talking about that. But these are more in line with women that say, I said I'm sorry, shoot. Which anybody in their right mind that hears an apology like that, you, I wouldn't accept it. Now, if you want to accept it, that's fine. But if I, if somebody said something and, I, and I'm expecting an apology from them and they said it in that manner and that spirit, I certainly wouldn't think that they're apologizing, okay? So I noticed that I see a lot of brothers up there, a lot of, you know, and when I mean brothers, I just mean men. Um, Because it crosses all race. And there are some things that do. And that's why I try to focus on them things, right? Just the human experience. Now, these women get their butts up there and they done had sex with every time dick and hair. Didn't use any protection. Okay. Didn't use any um, any kind of self control because most people know, as Tommy always, 
Tommy said it like this. Dick go to pussy, baby come. <laughs> but in the more sophisticated language, we would probably say if penis enters vagina, baby comes. Whether you're gay, straight, it does not matter. Y'all seen the transgender inmate that got all the correction women pregnant, okay? Because it's just something about that dynamic that is nature, okay? Okay, so let's just deal with it, all right? Now, with that being said, I see a lot of women on here that manipulate and they're playing two sides of a coin. Like, they had sex with three guys, right? And they got each one of them um, doing something. Or, or in their cases, they might say, well, I informed all three of them. Well, in this situation, if you've, and I, and I commend you for telling all three of them that you've been a hoe, a whore, a harlot. A floozy. Okay, that's good. And I, I, I got to put that on there because you got to see that your, your behavior is an aberration. Just because you didn't inform all three of these men that they could potentially be the father doesn't mean that that's acceptable behavior. There's no way in the world you should be having a baby and you don't know who the damn daddy is. It's just that plain and simple. You should not be having sex with that many people that you don't know who the hell your baby daddy is. That's We're going to start right there. Now, if you can't take that conversation, it's because society has dummied you down. And you think I'm trying to protect your feelings or I got to nurse you to give you this information. I can't. You Some information you have to have straight up with no chaser. And that's one of them. Because to see these women on there manipulating people, women, and it ain't just that it started. So I don't want to, I don't want to get it twisted. I'm just saying there's no excuses for you today because you got a DNA test. In my generation, we didn't have that. And the blood, you had to do a blood test and short of waiting till the baby get big and you're stabbing the damn baby. And I mean, listen, that's why most of the times it was really mama's baby, papa's baby, right? Because back in the, uh, the 60s and stuff like that, I mean, people weren't really doing that like they have the opportunity to do it today. So another thing that sparked this conversation is I remember my mother and, and my aunt having a conversation about another one of my relatives that and and I was young and um young teenager adolescent we were young and they were talking about one of my cousins who had gotten pregnant and they were saying oh no that's not uh I don't care what they say that's not so and so's baby that's so and so's baby and the so and so that they were talking about was an adult a fully grown adult that should have been in jail for doing this, okay? And this person was a teenager. Now, flash forward to 2022, this young man, who turned out to be a great young man, by the way, and that's probably because he got an old ass daddy. I, when you see this young man today, he looks exactly like that old man. And when I was a kid and when I heard that, I wasn't thinking about that. It was, and the, and the man, well, we ain't going to talk about that because I don't want my family members calling me, trying to kill me. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is the boy right now looks just like the man. The man been dead and gone 20, 30 years. But when I saw a picture of, this kid used to be kid, and he's an adult now with a family of his own. I was like, oh, my God. I don't care who my cousin said that baby daddy was. I already know. And this is the same thing my aunt and them was talking about. You know how kids is listening or young people listening to stuff they ain't got no business listening to. Okay. So 
I know I experienced it in my family, so I know damn well y'all are experiencing it in yours. You can lie if you want to, or you don't want to talk about it. It's fine. Just listen if you don't. The point I'm trying to make is, a lot of times, we get involved in these relationships. I'm talking about out of experience to people that charge us up. When you, But I'm here to tell you, when you meet somebody... There's a saying that go love at first sight. When you meet somebody like that, you need when you feel that much energy and that spark, when you first meet and see somebody, um, nine out of ten times, I'm not talking about to, to just hit. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love her. And you begin to operate off a stimulus that is real, real deep. It's a straight up attraction. It's a straight up an attachment almost. Actually, to be honest, perfectly honest with you, those are the relationships that you should walk away from quickly. Because, see, there's a world on the outside and then there's a spiritual world. And the world that you're not seeing that's being in, in, in motion right here, that's manifesting itself, being in operation, is the laws that you're, of your trauma being associated with that other person. Nine out of ten times, this is what you're experiencing. You're exper you don't even see they damage. You don't know what they went through. And they don't know what you went through. But some about y'all, when you see each other, you create a spark. And you just keep on trying to go. Go at that person. Go, oh my, and they trying to go at you, trying to go at them. And the, and, and it's that. The end, usually the relationship ends up abusive. Usually the relationships end up um, un untrust untrustworthy. Usually the relationships, I don't care how long they last. It's not the point. The point is I'm talking about is the spark. Now you can meet some people just as well and you don't feel that. It's boring actually. Boring. They might say, hey, what's your name? And you're like, yeah, my name is so-and-so, so-and-so. Hey, how you doing? I'm all right. How you doing? No, 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 no. Okay. You in a, you in a conference or whatever. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Hey, well, what are you going to do at lunchtime? You want to go out and eat at lunchtime? Oh, okay. That's fine. That's cool. Really not a spark. It's not like this person you go, oh, let me see if I can, I can get to them and ask them, can I have lunch with them? Oh, let me get. You don't feel all that. You don't feel all that pull. I want you to start looking at your own life and your own relationships and start thinking about it. Think about those relationships where the person really ramped you up and charged you. Are you still in those relationships today? Did those relationships fulfill you? Or did they bring you a lot of grief, actually? Because trauma bonding is an invisible bitch. You don't see it, but it's one of the hardest or bonds to break. It really is. And then once you identify what it is. And you can't get. You think you really love the person. Once you understand what trauma bonding is. And then once you realize that you're in it. Unless you're just going to go through the rest of your life. On death row. You'll just take your tail. And stick it between your legs. And lick your wounds. And be like damn. I, I got I, I had I gotta get out of this. This is not healthy. And usually the person that's so boring, that's just cool, okay, you might end up going next month or whatever to a movie or whatever. Over time it slowly progresses. It's sl and then you look at that person one day because that person is your friend. And then you look at that person and you go, wow. Without you telling this person all along, all along the way about certain situations, they telling you about certain situations because there's no pull, there's no drive, there's no energy. One day you may wake up, like dude said, you wake up suddenly, you're in love. You can't do without that person. You miss them in your life. That's what I suggest that you strive for. I'm not trying to be funny. 
because uh, those sparks in the spirit, man, you have to realize if that's a light at the end of a tunnel or a damn train coming your way. And most of us don't have a spirit of discernment because we haven't had good examples of relationships. So we get involved with this kind of craziness. And you never can be your true authentic self because of it. So that's just a word of advice I'm going to give today about sparks in the spirit. And if you experience those sparks that I'm talking about or a relationship where whether it's a friendship, a lover relationship, whatever a ship it is. And they're still in your life today because the charge. It wasn't all that. But y'all grown to stand the test of time. Your friendship has, your relationship has, whatever it is. Let me know in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you, family. If you like what you hear, please like, please subscribe, or share the channel. If you don't like the channel, please hit dislike. If you don't like the video, I mean, I won't say the channel, but at least the video. I don't care what you hit, just hit something. Please watch the commercials, the advertisements that they display. I appreciate it. You are helping the channel every time that you do. With that being said, I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.